This is a review of AT&T uh, gigabit internet after about a month and a half. Um, gigabit internet isn't really all that you really think it is. Uh, first of all, it only works just on a wired connection. Uh, the wireless connections are a good bit slower. They do have a lot of uh, routers and different things you can try to use um, to get higher speed. Um, but there are a lot of issues and they have driver problems and sometimes you may end up buying two or three different routers uh, before you um, get any kind of speed at all. And I'm talking about maybe 200 megabytes per second or so. Um, so they don't really do all that great. Um, the Pace router that comes with AT&T um, doesn't really do all that great um, as far as its speed either, um, but it does work better than, say, my old Linksys uh, E3000 that I used to have. Uh, I haven't upgraded to a newer router yet. Um, and hooking up a router on the Pace system is actually different than you're used to. Um, you're not going to run into the same kind of thing you've had in the past. Um, you'll have to run it as outside of their firewall and you have to set things up a lot differently and so you have to be satisfied with being able to make those changes to the PACE system. Um, and so I have tried those things and I didn't see any gain in speed or anything and so I really haven't tried any of those things. Um, and so, but their pace modem is much better than my, by my router by a long shot. Um, is the gigabit internet worth it? Um, I don't think so. Um, my recommendation for most people would be just the 100 megabytes per second uh, internet over the 1,000. Um, the 1,000 is faster, but it's only faster only on a wired thing, and the speeds you actually get are kind of all over the place. Um, I do actually pretty good on the upload speeds, sometimes between 700 and 900 megabytes per second. Uh, the download speeds can be anywhere between 400 megabytes and 700 megabytes. Occasionally it'll hit 800. Um, it varies among browsers, which browser is the fastest. The fastest I've ever had from any browser was Vita, which I don't particularly care for. It hit 1.4 gigahertz per second. But it has tabs and has a lot of other things I don't like about it. It didn't necessarily download everything. So um, I, I have kind of questions about how good it is. And so I, I'm actually not using it at all. Um, and so uh, also in addition to um, the AT&T high-speed internet, I'm also going to talk a little bit about uh, FreeBSD operating system. It's a Unix operating system. Um, I've installed a lot of Linux operating systems, uh, Arch Linux, um, Manjaro, uh, Ubuntu, Debian, and, and many others. Um, and they generally are pretty fast. Uh, FreeBSD is sort of interesting in some ways. Um, the hardware that I have, it just has not worked. Uh, the port system it has for installing software um, it takes forever for to that install. It doesn't seem to take up much disk space, but it is not something that uh, when I, I haven't tried installing a program from it, and it tried to use four ports at one time on an i7 machine. And um, also, I had trouble trying to install a driver for the i7 machine on FreeBSD. Um, it was a complicated process. And even updating Grub on it is uh, something just different than what I've done. And so it's, it's a bit more complicated than it would normally be. Um, so there's a lot of things about it that's, that's, that's bad. Uh, on the laptop that I'm running it on, it's just not stable at all. Um, and so that has really been a deterrent for me. I have tried running it on i7, but on the i7, it um, won't let me install the driver so I can get all three monitors. Um, and I ended up not getting along too well with the port system. And I prefer the package, uh, just using package update on updating things. Um, 
but the slow speed overall was probably the biggest killer for me. Um, I didn't test it on the i7 long enough to know um, if it was really usable, but um, I wasn't really doing real well with it. I only had it on USB 2 rather than a USB 3 on the i7, so I'm not sure it was going to work anyway. I uh, probably needed to install it on a better drive, but um, so far um, the tests I had were so poor that I didn't bother to do that. It takes forever to install things on it. Um, it's interesting uh, the way that it does things, and it seems to recover pretty well. It seems to recover better than, than a lot of uh, Linuxes would probably recover if you have to break something off midterm or something. Um, it has various update things on there. It kind of restricts you on a lot of things. I've tried a bunch of versions of it. I've tried the 11.2. I tried the 11.1 before that, but the 11.2 is, is the only one that uh, is the lowest you can go to right now that, that's, that's somewhat stable. I've tried the 12.0. I've also tried the 13. Um, the 13 is, is not really a release of, of BSD, but um, it technically will work like an operating system. Uh, it won't let you do updates and certain things, but um, it, it it's, it's okay, I guess. Uh, I had the best results with the 12. Um, the 11.2 was probably okay. The drive I had it installed on wasn't as good, um, and so I ended up I ended up putting the 13 over the, the 11.2. Um, Arch Linux is probably my favorite overall of, of most of the Linuxes. It's real fast. Um, but I have other things installed on some things. On Manjaro, I have um, some uh, virtual machines I run on there, and I've tested it on that. Um, I have Slackware uh, installed on a virtual machine. I could never get Slackware installed on, on an independent machine. Um, and also, in, in, I run Debian. Um, Debian runs pretty good. Um, and also, uh, Mint runs pretty decently. I actually use uh, Ubuntu more, but uh, Mint is probably as good as what I'm using with the, my Ubuntu. Um, and so, um, and Solus is not that bad. Um, as far as um, um, there's a, I can't think of the name of it off the bat, but there's a, there's a Debian. Uh, uh, it, um, Linux MX, I think it is. It's a Debian derivative. It is supposed to be fairly popular. I haven't really liked it as much overall. It hasn't really worked too well for me. Um, I have installed it, and it's okay. It's easier to install than a Debian is to install, but I know more about Debian. I have a lot more experience, and I know how to set the Debian up. So um, the Debian just works better for me. Um, and I've actually tried. Um, some of Mint's versions of Debian also, I didn't like them either. I just prefer their, their regular stuff on that. Um, so Arch is actually pretty good just as far as browsing the web and stuff. It's, it's hard to beat. It's really fast and it's, it's pretty, pretty good. Um, and so that's pretty much all I have for today. Um, I had wanted to discuss some of these things with, with FreeBSD. Uh, I was fascinated by it, um, but it just Technically, it's just not stable. It's not strong enough to, to actually use um, to do me any good. And the PC I'm running on just does, I only have four gigs of RAM on it, and it's just not working out on that. The processor's not strong enough, and it's and even on the i7 when I had it on it, it, it didn't do that great. It probably needs to be installed on the i7. I usually install things on a on a separate um, laptop with no hard drive in it because that's the easiest way to install it. Uh, when you have to install this with operating systems already on there, um, it's, it's a little bit more complicated. They have a different naming scheme than you normally have, uh, so you'll probably have to go into an advanced mode in order to install it that way. And so I just didn't do that because there was more complexity to it, and I just didn't want to have to bother to figure that out. Um, but probably that would be the main thing I would need to do, and, and probably also install it on i7 or so. To, to get a, a fair result for it. Um, but anyway, that's all I had to say today on everything. And um, as far as the AT&T stuff, my recommendation for most people is going to be the, uh, the 100 megabyte speed. Now, if you have like um, 90 devices and you have like 10 people using it, you know, you can get the, the, uh, the, uh, 
gigabit then. But other than that, just for most people, if you just have a small household or something, I just really don't see uh, much advantage of, of having it. And, um, and so also with AT&T, you're on a contract. And so you're on a contract for a year. Um, and so being on a contract at 100 megabytes shouldn't be too bad. Um, whereas the thousand, if you're not using it and you don't have any use for it, um, you're just kind of wasting your money. And so it's, it's, it's not a cool thing. Um, but um, anyway, that's all I have to say for today. If you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe. And maybe I'll get some more videos done uh, soon. Thanks a lot.